Hello students, so I'm Dr. Gayatri, your Ops and Gain faculty and we are back with the third topic in our NSET 25 series. So this is a sure short topic and there has been at least one question from this topic every year for the NSET exams. Yes, we are going to discuss the evaluation of primary amenorrhea. So by the end of this session, this is going to be like simple max for you where you'll be able to come to a diagnosis in every question about amenorrhea. So before going into the topic, I want you to understand three concepts so that you understand this better. First is the sequence of events that leads to menstruation. This is tilarki, pivarki and menarki. You can remember this as the prime minister. That is tilarki, pubarki, and menarki. Tilarki is the development of breast, pubarki is the development of pubic and axillary hair, and of course, menarki is the development of menses. All right. The second is the HPO axis, that is the hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis. So the hypothalamus will release GnRH, which will act on the pituitary, and the anterior pituitary will be releasing LH and FSH, which will act on the ovaries. And the ovaries are going to release estrogen and the corpus luteum will release the progesterone. This will act on the uterus so that the menses develops. Next is the HPA axis also known as hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis and the adrenal glands would be producing the androgens. So please note that the estrogen is responsible for the breast development and the androgen is responsible for the development of hair that is the pubic and axillary hair. The third thing is that in the fetus till 7 weeks the gonads are undifferentiated. That is, they can develop either into testis or into ovaries, which is determined by the Y chromosome. So, if it is a Y chromosome, the testis is going to develop and the testis will release AMH as well as androgen. The androgens are responsible for the male external genitalia and the AMH is responsible for inhibiting the Mullerian structures so that the Wolfian death develops. All right. Now let's learn about amenorrhea. So primary amenorrhea is defined as absence of menses by the age of 13 years if there is no secondary sexual characters or by the age of 15 years if there is presence of secondary sexual characters. 13, 15 without secondary sexual characters with secondary sexual characters. So primary amenorrhea could be due to problems at the level of hypothalamus, pituitary, ovary or the outflow tract. Let's see them one by one. So regarding the outflow tract, it could be due to the problems or blockage at the level of vagina, which could be either an imperforate hymen or a transverse vaginal septum. Both of these are going to prevent the blood from coming outside. This is also known as cryptomenorrhea. Or the uterus itself could be absent, such as in androgen insensitivity syndrome or MRKH. In case of the cryptomenorrhea that is due to the imperforate hymen or transverse vaginal septum or MRKH as well, what you have to understand is that everything above that is the HPO axis is intact. Only problem is at the level of outflow tract. So the level of LH, FSH, estrogen is going to be normal. The karyotype is that of a female and also the gonads would be ovaries. So how do we differentiate them? In case of a transverse vaginal septum or an imperforate hymen, the woman would be having cyclical abdominal pain due to collection of blood. There could be an abdominal mass which is due to this collection. Sometimes this can lead to retention of urine as well. How to differentiate these two? So in case of an imperforate hymen, you can see a bulging bluish membrane. Very important, bulging bluish membrane which slightly increases on size on well salva is typical of an imperforate hymen. Whereas in case of a transverse vaginal septum, while we see from outside, it appears to be normal because the septum is higher up. So while we do an internal examination, we will see that the vagina appears short due to the transverse vaginal septum and the cervix is not seen. In both of these condition, while we do a per rectal examination, we can feel the uterus. What happens in MRKH? So in MRKH, the uterus as such is absent. 
So on PR examination or while we do an ultrasound, the uterus is absent. Other than that, all the features are similar. That's the karyotype is XX, the hormone levels are normal, the ovaries are present. How do we manage them? For in case of an imperforate hymen, we give a cruciate incision. In case of transverse vaginal septum, we are going to excise the septum. In case of MRKH, we are going to do vaginoplasty before the woman gets married. What about androgen insensitivity syndrome? So in this as well, the secondary sexual characters are normal like the others. The uterus is absent like the MRKS syndrome. But the problem is that the karyotype is XY, that is they are genetically males. So what happens in this is, as the name suggests, there is androgen insensitivity syndrome. Though they are males, they are XY, they are producing androgens, but the tissues are not sensitive to this androgen. So as we studied in the beginning, androgen is responsible for the development of male external genitalia. So the external genitalia is going to be that of a female. Androgen is responsible for the development of hair. So there won't be any hair growth in the axilla or groin. Very, very important point. Apart from this, the androgen is going to be converted into estrogen. So the high level of estrogen is going to cause very well developed breast. As they are XY, the Y chromosome will cause the development of testis and this testis is going to produce the androgen as well as the AMH and this AMH will inhibit the Mullerian structures. So that's why there won't be any uterus in this. Alright, so what is the treatment for this? So, it is very important to remove the gonads because there is high chance of gonadoblastoma. So, once the puberty is attained, we are going to go for a gonadectomy and when needed, we might do a vaginoplasty as well. So, now let's move to the problems at the next level, that is at the level of ovaries. So, when there is a problem at the ovaries, the estrogen levels are going to be low and also the LH and FSH are going to be high so that the ovaries start acting better. So LHFSH is high and estrogen level is low. So what are the causes at the level of ovaries? The most common cause is due to a dysgenetic gonad which is most commonly associated with Turner syndrome. Another entity is the pure gonadal dysgenesis that is seen in Swire syndrome. Let's see how to differentiate both of these. So in this case, the secondary sexual characters are not well formed because the hormones are less in this. Let's see the details. So in Turner syndrome, what happens is that the chromosome is XO. So in this case, as it is XO, the gonads are streak ovaries. The streak ovaries would be producing less amount of estrogen. So the uterus is hypoplastic as well. They can have some typical features such as there could be webbed neck, the widely spaced nipples, poorly formed breasts, low hairline are some of the typical features that are seen with this. A very, very important thing to note in this is the stature. They have a short stature. Please note whenever the question gives you short stature, please think about Turner syndrome. And once they are giving you the stature, it's normal. You can safely rule out Turner's as well. All right. So in case of Turner syndrome, we would be giving the patient estrogen initially and later on adding progesterone as well so as to protect the lining of endometrium. Alright, now the next entity is the Swire syndrome. In Swire syndrome, it's due to the gene mutation in SRY gene. Swire SRY gene, you can correlate it from there. And this is due to the problem in the short arm of Y chromosome short arm of Y chromosome. All right. So as we mentioned, the Y chromosome is responsible for the development of the gonads. So in this case, as the SRY gene is abnormal, the gonads are not formed properly or there is dysgenetic gonads. And these dysgenetic gonads won't produce the androgen and AMH. As there is no androgen, the external genitalia is that of a female. As there is no AMH, the Mullerian structures are not inhibited and there is formation of uterus. Alright, once the woman reaches the puberty, from the adrenals, the androgen is released which is responsible for the hair growth as well.
androgen is low the gonads are dysgenetic the level of estrogen is low as well so the breast is poorly developed in this woman so the level of lh and fsh is going to be high as the gonads are not working properly the level of estrogen as well as the androgens is low in this regarding the secondary sexual characters the breast is poorly developed there is development of axillary as well as pubic hair the external genitalia is that of a female and the karyotype is that of a male so any male karyotype with the presence of uterus think of swyer syndrome it's very important to note that the gonadectomy has to be done as soon as possible because the risk of malignancy is very high in this now let's move on to the next level that is at the level of hypothalamus and pituitary so at the level of pituitary it could be either due to some tumors such as prolactinoma or it could be due to some radiation some chemotherapy medicines due to which the pituitary is not working properly at the level of hypothalamus this could be constitutional that is it's a diagnosis of exclusion where we don't find any other cause it could be due to kalman syndrome or due to some tumors let's discuss in detail about kalman syndrome though it is rare it is still frequently asked as a question so kalman syndrome is due to mutation in anosmin gene so anosmin gene anosmia so a typical feature in this is anosmia that is they have difficulty in perception of smell these women are typically tall cal tall so these women are usually tall the karyotyping is that of a female that is xx the gonads ovaries are normal as it's a problem with the hypothalamus so all the gonadotropin releasing hormones as well as the lh fsh is going to be low subsequently the level of estrogen is going to be low in this that is a hypo hypo stage hypogonadotropin hypogonadism along with that anosmia is typical in this and the females have a normal to tall stage Thank you.